The Real Truth About Pawn Stars When it comes to reality TV, and Pawn Stars in particular, fans need to learn to, ex to expect the unexpected. That could mean everything from seeing what kind of random crap someone tries to sell to the brokers of Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, or being shocked when the real world intrudes unreal reality that the show inhabits on television. Pawn Stars fans were caught by surprise when series star Austin Lee Chumley Russell was arrested for drug and weapon possession as part of an ongoing sexual assault investigation. The truth is, we never really know the people we like seeing on TV, and that wasn't the last time fans were reminded that the reality we see on Pawn Stars doesn't end when we change the channel. In 2018, longtime fans were sad to learn that Richard the Old Man Harrison had passed away at the age of 77. Time to put the hogging on hold as we look at the untold truth about the cast of Pawn Stars. Number 1. Chumley's Pass wasn't exactly a clean slate. In May of 2016, Austin Chumley Russell ended a plea deal for charges he received after police raided his home in connection with the investigation of a sex assault case. Though he never faced any sex assault charges, according to TMZ, police found marijuana, meth, Xanax, and eight firearms not registered to Chumley during a raid of his Chum Chum room, which is his party spot, complete with a stripper pole. But the Pawn Stars regulars' lawyers were able to negotiate down to just two charges, a felony possession of a firearm and felony possession of a controlled substance both of which will eventually become misdemeanors once he completes probation. And it's not the first time Chumley has been involved in some shadiness since becoming a reality star. In 2012, cameras captured Chumley in a brawl with an unidentified man who approached in a group of friends while they were hanging out on Hollywood Boulevard. He later insisted he was fighting in self-defense and that man was a stranger who asked for a ride and then threatened the group with a gun. It's unclear what happened to the man who was beaten and badly bleeding when Chumley and his friends fled the scene, but it's probably a good guess that he didn't get an invite to the Chum Chum room. Number 2. Human Skulls and Japanese Porn Over the years, the Rick Harrison, the co-owner of the world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, saw all kinds of weird items come and go. And when asked in multiple interviews about the oddest items anyone has ever brought into his shop to sell, Harrison usually answers, Japanese Porn. 200-year-old Japanese porn, specifically. It's all hand-painted. It's on a scroll down to every bodily fluid. Everything's really exaggerated. It's sort of creepy, and then after I bought it, I realized my mother comes into the pawn shop, so I couldn't display it out there. A guy also walked into the shop looking to sell a bunch of human skulls. According to the Dallas-Fort Worth Star-Telegram, the guy claimed he bought them from an auction at a dental school, but unsurprisingly, he did not get an offer from Harrison. In all honesty, though, if a couple of skulls and some porn are the strangest things to come through the door of the Vegas pawn show, it sounds like Harrison kind of got off easy. Number 3. They know what they're getting Given that attempting to film the actual day-to-day -day life at a pawn shop would result in some pretty boring television, it should come as no surprise that the items you see brought into the gold and silver pawn shop on the show have been vetted beforehand. Granted, this doesn't mean that the items are plans from producers. In fact, longtime shop manager Travis Benton told the Las Vegas Review Journal that his brokers spot unique items and show them to producers who decide if they are worthy of broadcasting. Another shop employee, Rocco Landy, said once an item is deemed possible TV material, its seller is coached on how to act while on camera. Some people have a great item to sell, but they appear nervous on film. It can take several tries to get it right, depending on the person. Producers have cut items from the show because the seller could not pull it together on camera, but it doesn't happen often. Executive producer Brent Montgomery even admitted that the staging bit a little bit further than that. In an interview with Odyssey, Montgomery said that they have really smart scripters to feed the characters organic information, and that he's coached the guys on buying stuff they wouldn't otherwise go for if they weren't doing the show. He also said the production team pre-negotiates pricing with the potential sellers off-camera to make sure these people will actually sell the stuff at a reasonable price. Otherwise, they're just trying to be on TV. That's understandable to a certain extent, but it definitely sheds a new light on the Harrison's infamous and regular parodied negotiation tactics. Number 4. They don't actually work at the store The world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop is actually managed by Travis Bitten, not Rick Harrison or the late Rich Harrison, better known as the Old Man. But they do actually shoot the show in the store, only privately and with customers who sign releases and agree to be extras. This sometimes causes issues for Benton and the other sellers on the floor, but more on that in a minute. According to Starcasm, part of the reason the Pawn Stars crew isn't readily available to the public is due to Nevada's privacy laws. Specifically in regards to the fact that shop patrons would constantly be trying to take photos and videos of the reality stars, which could violate the privacy of others in the shop by accidentally taking a shot of them. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because something tells us seven skulls and a duffel bag guy probably wouldn't be too thrilled to accidentally appear on some Vegas vacation or Instagram, let alone a hit TV show. 